Hey race fans, here I am, a little under a year and I can't believe how far I've come with my sim rig. Last year at this time, I didn't think I'd have one of these rigs, let alone a direct drive wheel. But here we are, save my pennies, and I'm happy to say that I'm loving this rig still. And yeah, I've got a computer box as my keyboard tray. So that's what we're talking about on this episode specifically. It's about keeping your keyboard tray up to the standards of the rest of your rig. Now, if money's not an object, no problem. I'm sure there are some expensive ones out there. I did a little bit of research only, not a lot, and I ended up going with this next level racing keyboard tray, which I got from the source in Canada. I'm not sure what it's called in the US right now, I'm not sure what it's called in, the Euro in Europe, but there are other places where you can get one of these. Um, I checked Advanced Sim Racing where I got the rig from and it only had the keyboard tray itself for 140 something dollars. It didn't come with a mouse tray. So I thought for 147 taxes in, in Canadian, I'm getting two trays, so why not give it a try? The cool thing about this setup is that they've supplied all the parts for you. All you have to get is an Allen key to tighten up the bolts on this, the bolts and the hardware. If you've never put one of these uh, rigs together, it's pretty simple to put this tray in. It took me only about half an hour just because I was taking my time with it. I did do a pre-build, so I just wanted to see how everything would fit, and it's a good thing that I did, and I'm gonna show you something that you can do. Um, this is a top view of how to slide the T-nuts down to the channel <clears throat> to make life easier for you. So just have to slide it in there. Now that's going to mount your keyboard uh, bracket arm to your rig. This is very, very important. You got to make sure this is tight. Now one thing I will say about this keyboard, which I am not in love with, is the fact that when you swing it closed, so i.e. when it's close to me, it's not flush with that vertical bar there. Now normally where I have this rig in my office area, I do not have a lot of space to the left and right of me. I am pretty much at minimal space. When, the, when I have my rig and my office chair in there, and this is gonna cause a problem when I slide it back into the normal area, but I tried a little hack that I'll show you at the end, so hopefully that'll save a little bit of space. So again, it's the one thing that I wish this tray would have been able to do is just swing totally out of the way. Um, and even I've tried it swinging it forward and it just looks weird. So continuing with the build, um, they've done a good job of making it really simple to follow the instructions. They've greased up the bolt, so that's pretty cool. So just make sure if you're gonna touch anything else that's really high quality, um, any clothing, um, you might not want to wear good quality clothing and you might want to put on some gloves because my hands did get greasy from putting this together. Now right here what I'm doing is putting the keyboard tray in basically the opposite side of where the instructions are telling you and the reason for this is that I'll show you later is that keyboard, tr that mouse tray, when this is closed like in this current setup right here, that tray was hitting me in the leg and it's, it was annoying. Not that it was hurting, but it was just in the way and I didn't like it. Because again, I'm going to have this in a much tighter space. So how it is right here, I can still access the mouse. And I'll still be able to access the keyboard. It's all great in this space, and we'll see what happens when I slide it in my regular space later on in a couple of, uh, in a, in a couple of weeks or months. So continuing with the build, again, it was, re it was really easy. You have to make sure that all your parts are snug here or else it will bounce around a little bit. You wanna, you wanna make sure that swing arm, is, the bolt is tight, but not too tight. You don't wanna be forcing it out of the way or back into uh, your proximity. Now this is the mount to 
connect the actual keyboard tray. So it is, it is very cool how the swinging options are there. There's a, there's a lot of flexibility to it. And this is the final part here. For this part, if you have a person handy to give you a hand with that, that would be good. That's why it took me a little bit longer. And there it is. Now you can see too that I put that top piece of the keyboard tray upside down just because in my pre-build, I didn't like it at the bottom. And the reason that I don't need that flange at the bottom is because I'm not gonna have the keyboard at the bottom. So I'm just trying here the mouse to see if I could use it on that single tray and this is how they want you to do it in the instructions by having that mouse tray close to you but I didn't like it like that so that's why I went for my version which is this version right here now what I'm doing is putting pieces of velcro on the bottom of my keyboard tray so I have both sides of the velcro or you may call it hook and loop so I attach one side to the keyboard and I attach the opposite side of the velcro to the keyboard also and just leave the sticky part available because when I just put it in place like this I don't have to guess where it's gonna stick so I know it's gonna stick right there now you're saying oh what's the big deal why would you do this because of this right here I can mount my keyboard vertically and that gives me more space it allows me better access and this is how I access the mouse. So if you have any questions or concerns or comments, let me know in the comments section. Thanks for watching this video and have fun racing.